In this video, I'm going to help you prepare for the Praxis Elementary Education Mathematics exam. That's test code 7003. Today, we'll cover three things. What content will be covered on the test and how to study for it. The most likely concepts you'll see on the exam. And we're gonna look at a few practice questions. For our full study guide, click the link right here or the one in the description. More information about that at the end of this video. The multiple subjects exam is test number 7001. It's split into four subtests, reading and language arts, mathematics, social studies, and science. Each contains a different amount of selected response questions. Looking at the entire test can be intimidating. But for now, let's chunk it and focus on math. Take a deep breath, you're in great hands. Let's look at the content categories. Category one, 16 questions about numbers and operations. Category two, 12 questions about algebraic thinking. Category three, 12 questions about geometry and measurement, data, statistics, and probability. Say that three times fast. Thankfully, we've done the research for you, and you can find exactly what you need to know in our study guide. But let's go ahead and talk about some key concepts now. The first category we'll look at is numbers and operations. This section has 16 questions. So for my math people out there, that's 40% of the exam. The key areas you'll focus on here include number theory, like place value and classifying numbers, operations and using algorithms to solve problems, and working with fractions, ratios, proportions, and percents. I know some of these titles might still be a little intimidating, but our guide translates them from math language and breaks them down into what you actually need to know. Let's look at operations as an example. The order of operations is an important part of the operations category and shows up on almost every exam. Basically, you're going to need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and use parentheses and exponents. And be sure you do it all in the correct order. This can include fractions, decimals, and negative numbers too. PEMDAS helps us keep it all straight. When you see an expression, complete everything you can within the parentheses first. Then move on to exponents, then multiplication and division, and last, do any addition and subtraction. Let's look at an example from our study material of a problem type you're likely to see on your test. Simplify the expression. 45 plus four cubed minus the quantity of 12 minus six times five. Enter our star of the show, PEMDAS. We use PEMDAS to know which order we need to follow as we work through the problem to make sure we get the right answer. First, we look at parentheses. 12 minus six equals six. Then we move on to exponents. Four cubed equals four times four times four, which is 64. Then we go to multiplication and division. Six times five equals 30. Finally, we have addition and subtraction. Because we only have addition and subtraction left, we move from left to right like we're reading. 45 plus 64 equals 109. Then subtract 30 from 109 to get a final answer of 79. Need help remembering the order of PEMDAS? There are lots of mnemonic devices out there, but a popular one is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I wonder what she did. Let's have you try your hand at one. Simplify the expression shown. Remember to use PEMDAS. Because there are multiple sets of parentheses and brackets, you'll also have to follow the correct order of operations within the parentheses and brackets. It takes quite a few steps, but you'll find the correct answer is B, 20. Like what you saw? Then you should subscribe to the 240 study guide and get a ton more practice questions where that came from. Let's keep it moving on to algebra. Algebra is worth 30% of your exam. The algebra category deals with expressions, equations, inequalities, and patterns. A skill that comes up a lot in these categories is translating a word problem into algebraic relationship. Let's try to solve one together. 
Maria uses one fourth of a stick of butter for each batch of muffins she makes. If she makes 18 batches of muffins this month, how many sticks of butter will she use? Write the equation that represents this scenario. You'll need to start by picking out key words and phrases to help you build this equation. One of the things that will really help you with this section is knowing what key words to look out for and what they mean. This is just a small sampling of words you could see in your test questions. Let's get back to our problem. Each is a very important word here. According to our table, it means multiplication. If we make B the number of batches and T the total sticks of butter, we can write the equation 1 fourth times B equals T. This means 1 fourth times the number of batches will give us the total number of sticks of butter we need. Your turn. Write an equation to represent this scenario. The Booster Club at Martin Middle School is selling spirit buttons for homecoming. The buttons cost 75 cents to make and will be sold for $2 each. How many buttons, B, must be sold to make a profit of $500? Let's use B to represent the number of buttons that the Booster Club sells. So the cost of the buttons is 0.75B and the profit is 2B. If the total profit is equal to the profit minus the cost of the buttons, we can write the following equation. 500 equals 2B minus 0.75B. And the correct answer is C. One more category to go. Last category on the list is that mouthful dealing with geometry and statistics. There is a lot packed into it and it will fill out the remaining 30% of your exam questions. In the geometry and measurement section, you're going to need to know properties of 2D shapes and 3D figures, how to use these properties to solve problems involving shapes, how to represent shapes on the coordinate plane, and how to use tools and units of measurement. You'll also need to know how to use statistics to describe data, how to show data in graphs and charts, and how to find probabilities. Let's look at one concept from geometry and measurement and one about data. First, geometry. You'll probably see quite a few questions about area and perimeter. It can get a little complex when we're looking at irregular shapes. For this shape, we're given the total height and the length of two of its sides. To find the area, split it into two shapes, a rectangle and a triangle. From here, we can use the formulas for the area of a triangle and the area of a rectangle to solve for both. The area of a rectangle is length times width. So in this case, six times four or 24. The area of a triangle is one half times base times height. To get the height of the triangle, subtract four from six. To get the area, multiply one half six and two. So the area of the triangle is six. Add them together to find the total area, 30 centimeters squared. Let's look at one last concept. This time we're looking at statistics. A lot of what you'll see here are the measures of central tendency. So we're talking mean, median, mode, and range. Need a quick refresher here? Sounds like a great opportunity for another peek into our study guide. Mean, median, and mode are different ways to measure central tendency, which means they describe the center of a set of data. The mean is more commonly known as the average. It is often represented by the Greek letter mu and is calculated by dividing the sum of the terms by the number of terms. To find the median, start by ordering the numbers from least to greatest. In a set that has an odd number of terms, the median is the middle value of that set. When there is an even number of terms, the median is found by calculating the mean of the middle two numbers. The mode is the term that occurs most frequently in a data set. Some sets of data have no mode. This occurs when all terms share the same frequency. Some sets of data have more than one mode. This happens when multiple pieces of data in a set appear the same number of times and appear more than any other data values. The range is the difference between the highest data value and the lowest data value. In general, the greater the range, the more spread out the data is. The smaller the range, the more it clusters together. 
Let's look at an example. Five students have their heights measured. The data set is 158, 155, 164, 155, and 168 centimeters. We want to find the mean, median, mode, and range of this data set. First, let's rearrange the data to go from least to greatest. We'll get 155, 155, 158, 164, and 168. To calculate the mean, first add these numbers together to get a total of 800. Then divide the result by the number of students measured, which is five. This gives us a calculated mean of 160. The median is the middle number in our organized data set, which is 158. The mode is the most frequent number, which here is 155. And our range is equal to 168, the highest number, minus 155, the smallest, which equals 13. So what happens when a new student joins the group? The data set is now 158, 166, 155, 164, 155, 168. What are the mean, median, mode, and range of this new data set? As before, we'll first rearrange the data from least to greatest, which gives us the new order of 155, 155, 158, 164, 166, and 168. Our mean calculation will now be the sum of all the measurements divided by six, since there is one more student than before. This will give us a mean of 161. The median calculation has also changed since we now have an even number of students. We'll add the two middle measurements, 158 and 164, together, then divide by two. This gives us a median of 161. Our mode is still 155. And the range stays 13 since the highest and lowest measurements haven't changed. Now, let's look at a purely numerical example. Say we have the data set shown. What are the mean, median, mode, and range? Once again, the mean equals the sum of the terms divided by the number of numbers in that data set. In this case, the sum of the data set is 73. And that sum is divided by 10 because there are 10 total data points. This gives us a mean of 7.3. For the median, remember to always put the data in order from least to greatest first. The order should go 1, 2, 5, 5, 5, 9, 9, 10, 11, and 16. Because there are 10 pieces of data in this set and 10 is even, there's no one middle in this set of data. That means the median must be calculated as the mean of the two middle values, 5 and 9. This gives us a median of 7. Since there are three fives and only one or two of each of the other values, our mode is 5. Lastly, the range is found by subtracting the lowest value, 1, from the highest value, 16. This equals a range of 15. Wow, I just love a good educational video. And at the end, when she explained range, are you ready to try a question? What is the mean of the data set? Remember to find the mean, we add up all the numbers in the data set, then divide by the number of numbers. This data set is made up of 11 numbers. So we add up all the numbers to get 517 and divide by 11, which equals 47. So D is the correct answer here. And that's it. We've gone through all the categories. And if you don't understand each of these concepts, use the 240 study guide. It will save you a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of worry. Our study guide has hours of videos, so you can watch and or listen while doing chores or going for a run. It is test aligned, so you know precisely what you need to study. And it has hundreds of practice questions, so you can be sure you're ready. And we're so confident in our guides, we offer a money back guarantee. One more practice question. Don't worry, this one is easy. What's the probability one more practice question. Don't worry, this one's easy. What's the probability you'd crush this Praxis Math exam using our study guides? The answer, 100%. So click the link below right now to get started.